The next item is Bill 23-171, Minor Consent for Vaccinations, Amendment Act of 2020. Councilmember Trayon White. So I want to thank uh, Councilmember Bray and his diligence uh, on this bill. I have reevaluated my initial support for this legislation. Uh, for the record, I've spoke to Councilmember Gray. We are setting up some meetings with uh, other council members, including industry experts, to discuss the bill. Um, however, parents have a fundamental right to direct the upbringing, education, and care of their children. Um, this bill, which is the Minor Consent for Vaccination Amendment Act of 2020, uh, the Supreme Court has entrenched history of as an entrenched history of protecting the fundamental rights of parenting regarding their children. A government must prove that infringement on a parent's liberty is essential to fulfillment of compelling interests and is the least restrictive means of fulfilling this state interest. I'm not convinced of this high standard is met in this legislation. I'm a parent and hearing from other parents is hard to imagine a child as young as 11 years old. I have a 12 year old making decisions regarding vaccination that could impact them for years to come. And even if a child is capable of meeting the requirements mm -hmm. for an informed consent standards in the legislation, the science, scientific evidence that the physical, mental, and emotional development of a child that young, uh, including a pre-adolescence varies, and it's often not sufficient enough to, for a child to make well-reasoned decisions about risk-taking involvement, their, involvement, their health and well-being. Additionally, uh, this legislation does not permit does, does not equally permit the child to use the same application to their comprehensive risks and benefits to refuse a vaccination uh, that their parents have previously chosen for their child to receive. But consenting to a vaccine and to consent to a, uh, for a child alone is acknowledged they have abdicated their constitutional right to a trial by jury should, that, should they become injured is a highly questionable uh, occurrence that may... Uh, lead to profound legal effects uh, do, as a result of them consenting to this uh, vaccination. Um, medical practitioners, schools, and others have sh should not be permitted to or coerce and principal minors into medical procedures that is capable of causing injury or death behind their parents' back. Um, unlike medical, school, and other personnel administering vaccines, it's parents are legally accountable for the health care education of a minor child when a child is experiencing a vaccine reaction or becomes chronically ill or disabled. Um, additionally, the U.S. Federal Vaccine Injury Compensation Program has awarded more than $4 billion to vaccine victims since 1988, and two or three vaccines interplaners are turned away without financial reports. Um, in conclusion, I understand the majority of council members may uh, support this bill as of right now, and I can cannot do so in good conscience, giving consent uh, in the bill as early as 11 years old. Um, and, and I already talked about Councilmember Gray and I have uh, agreed to meet to discuss uh, the bills with some medical professionals. Uh, so I want to, I will be voting no uh, as related to this bill. We look forward to the further discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilmember White. Um, not that I want to provoke a debate, but I, I want the record to reflect a, a contrary view, and that is that I think that public health can very much be in the public interest, and that is have a compelling state interest. And we see that today with the pandemic and uh, the need for, um, because of public health, to um, alter certain behaviors. That's how important public health is. I think there's a compelling state interest there. And I would also say or note that vaccines, the kinds of vaccines that are authorized under this legislation are, are vaccines that have been deemed safe and reliable all uh, through the um, drug approval process it includes the um, Federal Drug Administration. I think those are very important criteria. We're not talking about just any medical procedure, but we're talking about um, vaccines that have gone through a rigorous process. And we're seeing that as well today, both in the measles epidemic and the uh, COVID pandemic. Is there any further discussion regarding this legislation? Mm -hmm. Councilmember Che? Yes, thank you very much. I uh, was not going to prolong this either, but I think you're correct. The statements made by a uh, uh, warded council member probably shouldn't stand unrebutted. I do know a little bit, bit about uh, Supreme Court rulings, compelling justifications, and things of that nature. 
and vaccines have routinely been upheld uh, as something available to, um, to both parents and children and to the larger community. Because what we seem to forget sometimes, especially the uh, people who oppose these things, they, they believe that um, it's just their choice. The fact of the matter is a child needs to be protected against uh, the dangers of things like measles, uh, other diseases that cause death, and the community needs to be protected so that diseases that were once thought to be eliminated are not coming back, which is what we're finding uh, around the world. So um, the idea that somehow this is not compelling uh, is a mistake. And also, I want to underline the fact that when we're talking about children, uh, minors, we're talking about a floor of an age. They still have to meet the gatekeeper. Uh, the physician ha it has to meet a judgment that the uh, minor is capable of informed consent. So um, again, just to make sure that the statements that were made earlier are not left there unrebutted. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Che. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Gray. I, I just I want to appreciate the uh, comments that were made um, by uh, Councilmember Che uh, in particular. Uh, I've talked with her about it, and I'm I'm, I'm going to follow up uh, in the immediate aftermath of this session today um, with uh, Councilmember Treyon White uh, and the uh, folks that we worked with. Uh, to get to the point that we got to on the legislation and that she got to uh, as well. Um, you know, there's, there's no question that there's a rigorous process that's engaged in in order to get to informed consent. Uh, there's nothing frivolous about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, one can look at having reached uh, informed consent in other uh, situations. I know that it's still in the minds of, of, of a number of people, even though it was many years ago, uh, there's a whole issue with uh, the Tuskegee experiment, and we certainly don't ever want to have anything like that again. But I just don't see any possibility that the legislation that we're engaged in now and the work that's gone on that led up to this point, um, we could ever possibly have that kind of situation once again. So I'm comfortable with where we are uh, with the legislation. I again want to thank Councilmember Che for her work, and I will look forward to uh, Councilmember Traum while we're following up with you. Uh, to make sure that we have the meeting that we've talked about. Uh, so hopefully at the end of that conversation, uh, you will feel more comfortable than you felt uh, up to this point. Chairman. Uh, let me just see if anybody else wants to speak. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McDuffie. Just just one uh, sort of practical question. You know, I, not to, I know everybody's seeking not to prolong this, but I think, uh, you know, Council Member, it raises uh, some really important uh, issues, this measure. And just practically speaking, I know there's a, a number of things that are in the bill in terms of confidentiality and so forth. But like, you know, practically speaking, this this measure helps to protect young folks in, in instances where perhaps their parents, for whatever reason, religious or otherwise, uh, would not consent to a vaccination. But is there is there some potential concern or, or how might, you know, Council Member Gray or Che respond, you know, if a parent finds out that a kid was vaccinated against, you know, their uh, decision, I mean, what, I mean, there are potential implications for that, right? I mean, this measure would help to protect kids and their health and folks who might come in contact with those kids. On the other hand, does it protect the kid at home, you know, if a parent finds out that they did this against their will? Uh, I, I'm sure you all have thought about this, and I'd love to hear how you might respond to that. Well, Mr. Gray, do you want to read? Let me ask uh, Councilmember Che if she would weigh in on this, uh, because she's had you know, considerable experience with issues like this, uh, given you know her work as a law professor and given her work on the uh, bill uh, to this point. So, Councilmember Che, let me ask you to weigh in uh, on this around Councilman McDuffie's uh, question that he posed? Sure. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is that um, uh, the bill includes many protections so that the confidentiality 
and privacy of the minor's actions are maintained. But uh, Councilmember McDuffie wants to know, well, what, what if the parents find out? What, you know, what kind of trouble might the minor get into? This is the risk, I would just add, of any minor access laws, whether it be pregnancy, abortion, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, uh, uh, treatment, any of those things. And um, the uh, reporting and updating of forms and that sort of thing, all of them are under the law meant to protect the minor. But should the minor um, uh, parents learn of this and then act against the minor, it's, it's like any other risk that minors have when their parents, you know, uh, react um, so that uh, this is no different. You know, as I said, pregnancy, um, treatment for uh, STDs, any of those things. Uh, so it, it's within that whole realm. Uh, there's, a, a, I think, a, a rigorous effort to protect. But should it happen, then uh, that that is a, a risk. And parents, of course, <laughs> Are not entitled to abuse their children. Um, Just a quick follow up, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure what my time looks like, but but do those other examples that you raise, pregnancy, STDs, uh, what's the age with respect to those types of things, and, and how young uh, do we allow the, the the individual consent of minors in those instances? I, I'm not sure of each and every one. Some do not have any. Some have. Um, uh, 12s, uh, you know, and different states have different ages like that. I guess it depends upon when you might be subject to them. I believe with the STDs, it might be 11. Um, and I think that that may be the basis on which uh, Council Member Gray put that number in there. Uh, but remember, and I really want to emphasize this, that's a floor, okay? That doesn't mean that if a child reaches that age that one can automatically get a vaccine. First of all, the vaccine has to be on the approved safe list of the CDC. And second of all, the physician has to make a judgment about whether that, you could have a 14-year-old who a physician could uh, conclude is not in a position to make, uh, to give informed consent. So that's the real uh, determinant here. And which is why I take it that, uh, uh, Council Member Gray worked so closely with the Medical Society uh, on this point. So, Council, Council Member uh, Allen, you wanted to be recognized. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had not really planned on speaking on this, but I, I do feel like, given the debate, that it's important that we have a, a robust record that that speaks about why this is so important. Um, like I've heard some of my colleagues say, I mean, and let me just put my public health hat on. I mean. What we're talking about is is making sure that we take the steps necessary and we have the rules um, and laws set up in a way that we are using vaccines in a way that keep not only individuals safe, but keep families, neighborhoods, and communities safe. Um, that is the whole point of public health. Um, I think that as I've heard my colleagues say, we've, we lay out within the law the ways in which uh, the, those vaccines have to be on that safe list. We're, uh, Healthcare providers have to play a role in the decision making as well to make sure that that young person is making the right decision. And I know in previous uh, pieces of legislation that have related to uh, young people, you know, we've worked on things uh, such as not having it uh, show up on a family insurance policy, for example, to try to help protect that young person. Um, you know, so there's there are steps that we can take in a way that address, as I heard Mr. McDuffie talking about, what concern, you know, how would we make sure we're protecting. Um, if a, if a young person perhaps is taking a step that their their parents or guardians uh, don't exercise, but they know it's in their own best health, and so they're trying to take that step. Um, and I'll note, I mean, it, it wasn't but a, a couple of months ago this council uh, recognized the importance of that young person being empowered to, to for their own health and safety and rights. We you know we lowered the age for uh, SAVRA, which is our um, uh, survivors of, of sexual violence, where we lowered the age to thirteen, so that. Uh, young people who have experienced sexual violence are able to have rights uh, that they can take uh, on their own without having to rely on a parent and can even do separate from the parent. So we recognize that young person's rights and abilities uh, to take those steps for themselves when it comes to their health and safety. So I just want to make sure that um, I kind of put my public health hat back on and just kind of really make sure that 
the record is clear about how important something like this is, uh, who it is geared toward is protecting young people, but that uh, using vaccines are a way that we not only keep individuals safe, but we keep communities safe. And we certainly are going to be having a conversation sometime next year uh, when there's another vaccine that's going to be critically important, that's going to see widespread distribution. And we're going to want to make sure that uh, that we're taking the right steps. So anyway, I just want to make sure I was on the record with that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Allen. If there's no more first round, second round would be Councilmember Treon White. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to note that um, during the rebuttal, um, there has been comments about uh, the, the Center for Disease Control um, having uh, stamped these said um, vaccinations. For me, it's not an issue of the vaccination. It's an issue of the council voting to circumvent the inclusion of a parent making the decision about their child. Um, you know, and, and the floor is an 11 year old. I have a 12 year old son who just can barely put together a, a five page paper or finish his homework on time or be up late at night playing Fortnite, making decisions about his health. And so for us to circumvent that process is very wor worrisome for me. And that's why I stand as relates to uh, this said legislation uh, as we attempt to use the law um, to remove parental involvement as relates to an important decision made by a minor as young as 11 years old. Thank you. Uh, if there's no further discussion on this bill, we have the bill before us. Um, Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Chairman Mendelson? Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie? Seems like we've lost him. Councilmember Pinto? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau? Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Silverman? Yes. Councilmember Silverman votes yes. Councilmember Todd? Yes. Councilmember Todd votes yes. Councilmember Robert White? Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Treon White? No. Councilmember Treon White votes no. Councilmember Allen? Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds? Yes. Councilmember Bonds votes yes. Councilmember Che? Yes. Councilmember Che votes yes. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Grosso? Yes. Councilmember Grosso votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie? Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 yeses and one no. The measure is approved.